Good morning. Welcome to the Fairway Show. Today, my guests are Rob Hunt from Powerbug in the UK. Hi, good morning. Joseph, and Joseph McClucky from JPSM Golf in Toronto. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning. We're living in uh, strange times, and, and I thought before we dive into talking about uh, trolleys and, and power bug and, and uh, all of that, I just uh, get a little uh, bit of background on what's happening in the UK from you, Rob, and, and obviously what's happening here in Toronto from Joseph. So um, are they playing golf in the UK right now, Rob? Um, right now, unfortunately not, Peter. We're on complete close down. All golf courses are closed. And um, the, um, there's a lot of pressure on um, the, uh, the government, I believe, or the authorities to get golf courses in particular open as soon as possible, because it's probably one of the safest sports to play under these conditions. Um, up until quite recently, the courses were open. Uh, social distancing was um, very important and uh, taking out uh, these antiseptic wipes and using them where appropriate. Um, but unfortunately, that's all stopped now. But hopefully, within the not too distant future, we'll be back out there on the golf course. Joseph, you can relate to the same here in Toronto, pretty much. Yeah, absolutely. We haven't effectively our season hasn't begun. Uh, you know, out west in Vancouver courses, and then obviously over in Victoria courses stay open in the winter. Um, but my, mainly, what we're seeing that's opened is is sort of daily daily fee courses are are higher end private clubs and some of our sort of sort of two of our top 10 are out in Vancouver they're closed and in Ontario our our mandatory government shutdown has just been extended until May 12th so uh, we're not seeing a whole lot happening and then the only real retailer we have in Canada is Golf Town and they've now been closed for Oh, probably about a month and they've laid off a thousand employees. So um, other than our online business, uh, there's not a lot happening at the moment. And I'm just finishing my own quarantine from coming back from Florida. So I can't wait to get out and go for a walk tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, yeah. Um, that's one of the blessings, isn't it? If there can be a blessing, we can go out for a nice walk and uh, not be under too much pressure, Joseph, to get yeah. back to those emails. <laughs> yeah. Would, would be good to go out for a walk with a wedge or a putter in your hand too. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. So Rob, um, you've been distributing trolleys in the UK for quite some time. How did you get started in the business? Well, um, we're actually manufacturers. Um, so we're brand owners of Powerbug, of course. And um, I was introduced to an embryonic golf trolley manufacturer in um, Southeast Asia around 2002 um, and um, spent some time with these guys just northwest of Shanghai um, looking at the specifications and design of electric golf trolleys and um, eventually um, convinced myself to launch a brand in the UK in um, 2003. So um, it was a kind of um, it was a kind of an introduction into this embryonic company as I uh, mentioned, um, which which gave me, it struck a chord. The guys there were very, very uh, proficient and talented at uh, engineering design, uh, uh, electronic design, very, very clever guys. And um, I just disposed of a business and I suppose I was looking for something to do. And uh, yeah, this one, this got me going. So yeah, 2003 and the rest is history really. So um, we started to bring the product into the UK. Unfortunately, the whole um, electric golf trolley um, sector was uh, stigmatized to a certain extent at that time because there's a whole bunch of electric golf trolley manufacturers in Southeast Asia exporting product to Europe, which frankly um, was of suspect quality. And uh, retailers, uh, high street retailers, green grass and uh, online retailers alike were selling product and would experience at that time around a 40% rejection rate. So 40% of the product they sold would fail within the first 12 months, some a lot quicker than that. 
everybody got burnt and that's when we entered the market so we we had a challenge to convince um convince the uh the paying public and the retailers that um we had a product which was of excellent quality it was affordable and we could stand behind our product and answer any questions uh thrown at us really so it's very challenging it's, it's very challenging and very exciting at the time must have been crazy <laughs> Joseph, you have a, a an interesting story about how you got started in your in, in the business that, that involves your car being stolen. Yeah, I um, the short version is I've used motorized trolleys for a number of years because of back issues, and uh, but I worked in the gift and tableware business, and on my way home from a trade show one night, I parked my car to. Uh, to go to a bank machine. And when I came back, my car was gone and so was my trolley. Um, and so the short version is I went online to replace it and I found uh, the Stuart carts because I'd put in being Scottish, I put in remote control trolley, not cart and the Stuart product came up. It wasn't available in Canada. It was out of the States in Boston. I bought one, started to use it, had a background in sales and marketing with with luxury brands got this stupid idea and uh you know i guess we're uh 13 13 years later we're the largest distributor of motorized trolleys in canada mm. and literally t today as we're on this call um our first 40-foot container of power bugs is backing up to my distribution facility <laughs> congratulations it's nice isn't it joseph after all these years yeah, yeah. Rob and I have known each other for probably 10 years. More, 12 years. Yeah, yeah. and we, we played golf together in the early days with a group of guys, really the Asbury boys, yeah. who, who are distributed in Canada. It's, um, it, Joseph, it's really interesting. You mentioned the guys from, you know, you mentioned Stuart Golf and Asbury Golf. Well, when, when we met, um, we we're on the Celebration Golf Course in Canada, uh, in um, Florida, mm -hmm. and I was playing golf with the Asprey boys from Wales, and you were following with Mark and Dave from Stuart Golf behind us, and yep. that's where we all met all that long time ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and Rob, that was even before I was uh, distributing Moto Caddy. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so Rob and I got talking, and the, the joke for, I don't know, <laughs> all those years was, well, if you ever want to sell a good trolley, let me know. <laughs> I'd, and, find you, I'd find you every year at the PGA show, wouldn't I? Yeah. And here yeah. you are. Yeah. yeah some of you would be, uh, we'd, we'd be able to, you know, have a conversation and, and get into it and chew the, chew the cut, as they say. Other years, it'd be a case of, I haven't seen Joseph this year. Where is, and I'd catch his eye and I'd say, hey, Joseph, yeah, hey, yeah, Rob, you know where I am, <laughs> wasn't it? Yeah, and I think what happened for us and Peter, as you know, is, is as as our business grew. Um, if you think Electronic Caddy was the number one product in the country, uh, I got to know Frank really well, and it was it was Frank and everybody else. And here we are, all, the, all those years later, and they don't exist. And you know, we've got we've obviously started with Stuart. We added Moto Caddy in in '08. Um, and then we added cart tech two years ago. And, but one of the things we knew is, is the stats tell us that 84% of Canadian golfers are public players. Um, and so we could see that between our, our online business, our direct online business or a showroom uh, or golf town, the percentage of business we were getting from golf town, we weren't really getting to the, the public player as we call them the truck slammers. And we also realized that the, that the person who was playing public golf was probably not likely to be spending three plus thousand for a Stewart. Some were, um, but they probably weren't going to spend, you know, over a thousand for a motorized trolley. And, and one of the things we realized with, uh, with, with power bug, is it would get us to to an entry level price point that could catch the eye of the public player, um, and really effectively the biggest segment of the market that probably wasn't being identified. 
And so that's, that was kind of the idea of it. Now things obviously changed over the years with, with uh, the percentage of business that golf town had with, you know, prior to their 2016 bankruptcy. Um, and, and with that, the market changed also because people went, were shopping more online. Certainly the green grass business came back because people were supporting their local clubs. And, and so it, it's been a constant change, in, certainly in the last four plus years. And, and just it, it, as, as Rob said, we, we would always touch base and it was a year ago, last January, that we were at the show, and yeah. and I was with the Cart Tech guys. That's right. And Rob Rob went by, and, and he looked at me, and I said, "Well, we we started doing this a year ago, and and it was it was the fastest sort of conversation, and we looked at each other because Rob then told me that he had changed his business model in the UK because before." He was in there battling with, in the UK with, with uh, Power Caddy and Moto Caddy, who are 1A and 1B globally, uh, without any question, if, if you look at. And, and Rob had said, um, you know, how are you doing? And I told him, we got talking about different things. And I said, what had happened with us is our, is our online business had really taken off. And we were really focusing on that. And then he told me that he had basically changed his model to not sell through what they would say the high street, or we would say retailers or even green grass and that he'd moved all of his business to direct online. Yeah, and so we looked, what, what go ahead, Rob. If it was um, when, when we had that conversation, um, we had actually bedded in our online offer, if you like. So we'd actually, so we're rolling back. Um, so to two years ago, two years ago, this January past was when we had that conversation. Mm -hmm. And we were three years in to our, if you like, our online offer. We'd gone through the transition period of being uh, supplying through retailers and green grass into uh, pure online transactions within the UK, um, with the exception literally of half a dozen retailers who we've known forever and they're our friends. Um, so we'd gone through that transition period and were, were experiencing a completely, how can we say, fresh, and exciting uh, environment to work in. And that's why I was, if you like, quite pumped when I spoke to you uh, at the PGA show that time. Um, so we were still a net exporter from the UK. At, at that time, I believe it was 67% of our sales were actually export product to mainland Europe, France, Italy, Spain, Portugal, etc. cetera. Um, and uh, our online business was growing. And what we wanted to see um, for um, various reasons. We wanted to see at least a 50-50 split, if not slightly leaning towards the UK market for us being dominant. Um, and it's kind of where we are now, actually. The, the, the split's gone the other way. It's, it's kind of 60% in favour of the UK. But our business has grown and our online business has grown uh, exponentially, really. Um, and it's been very refreshing. We, Let me, we, uh, oh, yeah. Sorry, Rob. It's okay. I was just going to say, I was just going to suggest that we back up a little bit because you're both talking about, you know, how you kind of grew the business and got together, but I, I'm really interested in um, what the business looked like uh, in the UK back when things got going versus what it was in Canada because the, the timeline's not that far apart. I mean, you're talking 17 years ago, yeah. um, Joseph's talking 13 years ago, mm -hmm. and yet the... Um, numbers indicate that over 50% of rounds played in the UK are played using an electric trolley, whereas yeah. in Canada, we're stuck down around somewhere eight to 10%. So there's a, there's a big gap in, in the way the golf cultures have evolved in the two countries. You know, I think going back to our early days, uh, when we launched, it was very difficult to sell um, an electric golf trolley anywhere else than a retail outlet or a green grass outlet. Um, because um, we, our demographic um, has changed. It was the more mature golfer would use an electric golf trolley. And um, we weren't really online savvy. So to try to sell a golf trolley online was very, very difficult, if not impossible. And uh, during that period to date, things have completely changed where 
our demographics are changing. It's quite trendy to have a, an electric golf trolley. And, you know, we have our competition to thank for that um, because um, the whole sector has got together and, if you like, upped um, the, um, the function game. And the, uh, the, the product's really moved on. It's become reliable with the introduction of lithium batteries. We've all gone our own way with lithium and have our unique sales points. So the electric golf trolley um, has become vibrant and very, very competitive. And that's, that's driven numbers. So that's kind of wh where we've um, uh, ended up in the UK. Yeah. Uh, and, and in North America, we've got, sorry, Joseph, I'm just gonna jump in. And... Yeah. In North America, we've, we've had a little bit different culture because of the riding component that, that people are so used to and and i know joseph's you know battled that for for the last uh, dozen or more years too yeah when, when i got into the business it was interesting what rob's talking about because when i got into the business with the stewarts in 2007 um the electronic caddy and power caddy uh because power caddy was at that time distributed out of somebody in montreal they'd come through a very difficult period because the battery that was the stock battery was the sun and shine battery. Yeah. And, and I had one in, in one of my trolleys and the thing was probably six years old and was still going, but somebody, some bright spark at sun and shine decided to change their technology and they, all the batteries failed. Yeah. So here, here I come along trying to sell a premium golf trolley uh, over two thousand dollars, twenty five hundred dollars, and the battery technology was they, they they all were failing, and they were they were lasting instead of asking five or six years, they were lasting they weren't lasting a season. So so as 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 Rob talked about inferior quality, we didn't have a trolley problem, we had a power power plant problem, and and so. You know, funny enough, the the we 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 lumped along for years with you know Stewart and then with Moto Caddy on lead acid batteries. But the game changer, without a question of a doubt, was the introduction of lithium. Absolutely. Um, and when lithium came along, so I know if it was a normal year, if it was a normal year prior to lithium, at this time of the year, our every phone call we got would be somebody and my my trolley won't work. And it was because of a, a five month winter and they didn't look after their battery properly and their battery had failed. So, yeah. so Joseph, just talking about these lead acid batteries, you, you know what I'm like, I, I dig into this stuff. Uh, when I see a problem, I, I think the best way to solve a problem is to understand the problem. When you understand a problem, you do something about solving it. And again, we kind of parachuted into this um, electric golf trolley world exactly at the same time with these, batteries, lead acid batteries, they were a nightmare. And um, I kind of reflected on where these things came from. And going back to the very, very early days with the power caddy type product, they were using um, a battery which seemed to last forever. But I don't think there were um, factories making batteries for golf trolleys, they were making batteries. And the, the quality of their batteries didn't vary. Then because of the sheer volume of batteries being used in the electric golf trolley sector, they, these guys realized that they were selling a, a battery that actually was warranted for a period of time, maybe one year or in Europe, two years or so for a period of time. And they'd over engineered their batteries because these batteries were lasting five, maybe even 10 years in some instances. And um, I suppose if you put your commercial head on, why buy a, build a product? which is lasting 10 years when really two, two years would be okay. And I, tr I personally believe manufacturers started making batteries for markets. So the electric golf trolley marketplace, how long do you warrant a battery for 12 months? Well, we'll make it, um, we won't make a five year battery. We'll make something slightly less than a five year battery because it's more profitable. Yeah, that's, um, that's probably that's where, accurate. Yeah, and that's where we ended up. That's yeah. where we ended up. And and so, and sorry. and but back to Rob's point about when I got into the business, it was the demographic. My my customer was sixty five plus, mm. and and today, fast forward all those years later, our customers are now dipping into the to the mid forties. 
as Rob said, technology and, and features and benefits have changed. The look of the products changed. Um, and now, I mean, it, it shocks me sometimes. And so people will say to me, uh, oh yeah, your business must be growing because people are getting older. And I, and, and my comment now is, yeah, that's what everybody says. And the, <laughs> the, the reality is the complete opposite. It's people are getting younger. I, I call it a bit of the tiger effect, although it's come and gone is that the tiger, the tiger effect all those years ago. And, and that's, it's weird when you think about it all those years ago, when he, he got, when he changed the demographic or the makeup of golfers, younger people were getting into the game and, and sleek and cool was savvy. And now, now he's gotten out of it. As far as all the people he brought into the game, a lot of them have got back out of the game because the spike, it's almost like the coronavirus, they're trying to flatten the curve and it, it definitely flattened for us, but we've had nice incremental growth every year, but it's because people want to walk again. It became the tiger effect ultimately would be that golf was seen as a sport. It wasn't as Peter, you'd know here, it was for round bellies and riding carts. That's changed. It's, it's walking. Um, and, and so, so interestingly enough, as much as we don't know how we'll come out on the other end of what we're, we're dealing with, but really if, if only one person can ride a card, if you're not living in the same household, there may be an uptick in, in use of the product. I know in speaking with my, uh, my business partners in the U S, uh, last night, um, they, for the month of April, they will have their single biggest month in the history of their company. They will sell more trolleys in the month of April. They, they, he actually expects to hit it next week. He will sell more trolleys in the month of April than he's ever sold in any month in the history of his company. Wow, that's and, and, it, and it's because people, especially in the U.S., were very risky. Well, you have to eliminate half the courses in the U.S. because you can't walk them. You have to ride. Um, but, you know, people are just saying, well, I'm going to buy one of these because I'm going to walk. Yeah. So, so go figure. Yeah. Rob, in the UK, walking has been an integral part of the game forever. Um, do most golfers um, transport their trolleys to and from the course or, or yeah. do they leave them there and... Most most, most golfers transport their their trolleys to and from the course. Okay. So they're they're what we'd call trunk slammers. Trunk slammers, yeah. Mo most of us guys are trunk slammers. Yeah. Okay. Um, and of course, um, you know, there. I'm sure in in Canada and the U.S. we're blessed with um, we're we're surrounded by some amazing golf courses. Uh, so um, yeah, we travel all over the place slamming trunks at the end of the day. Yeah. Uh, with our with our trolleys. Um, the, th the, ex the, the, the thing that really has set our sector alight, though, is the, the, kind of, is the reliability and the design features of trolleys. Uh, they came out of the dark ages 25 years ago um, to modern day times. And, you know, we've, we've seen that uh, graphic of the, um, the ape going into a gorilla, going into a homo sapien standing upright. Same kind of evolution period with the electric golf trolley, Joseph. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and I remember, this is, this is almost like taking a walk down memory lane, but I remember when I started with Stewart's, um, people wanted to buy it because it looks so cool relative yeah. to the rest of the market. But yeah. the, the battery, the perception was the battery weighed more than the trolley. You know, That's you had a 32-pound unit and you had a 25-pound battery. And today, yeah. one, of the things, one of the things that going to be our real point of difference with power bug is even though even though we have um even though we have a uh you know the lightweight batteries with everything else but one of the things with power bug is that mini lithium battery it's the smallest battery available in the market so we know you guys can see that on the screen i assume yeah right? yeah and and so one of the things we we you know in sales really what is selling we overcome objection and i couldn't overcome that 25 pound battery of objection I know when we went to the six pound Stuart lithium battery, our business changed dramatically. And so now with PowerBug, when, when you look at that, that mini lithium battery, 
that's something that, that we know we've got trolley reliability, um, but to have something that's that small and compact, well, one of the negatives, Peter, and, and you and I have had this discussion is with our Motocaddy lithium batteries, people would call us and want to buy a bag for it to carry it in. And we'd say, well, you can just put it under your arm. Well, it should have a bag. It should have a strap. Well, you look at this thing. You can, I can, I'm, wearing, I'm wearing a hoodie right now. I could put that in the pocket of the hoodie. <laughs> well, I don't know if... Um, well, Rob, has that many lithium battery been a game changer for you guys? Absolutely, yeah. Well, I'm, I, I won't bore you with the details, but I cut my teeth in the uh, automotive industry. And um, that relationship, of course, led me over to um, Germany, Stuttgart, where some uh, pretty high quality uh, motor vehicles are made. And um, I, I maintained my relationships with my friends um, uh, over in Germany. And uh, we'd, we'd always been talking about battery technology, which is kind of interesting, I suppose, being if you're into that kind of thing, you know. And so um, the, uh, my friends over there um, introduced me to one of their manufacturers that eventually developed this thing. And I worked with um, our, our German partners for a number of years. Our German partners, our battery manufacturers, by the way, uh, manufacture for um, uh, brands like um, uh, Porsche, Mercedes, and Bugatti. And by volume, we're their biggest customer. So we're kind of surrounded by some quality, uh, some quality uh, engineering. But these things came along and nobody could believe what this battery could do when we launched it. So in the UK, we boast that you'll get at least 27 holes um, out of this battery, but we've achieved over 36. In fact, I've got three rounds of golf out of one charge, which is pretty amazing. Yeah. It was hot, well, say hot. It was in the summer, flat course, um, with uh, not too much weight on board, but the course coverage was, is amazing. And so that battery um, is a kilo in weight, which is 2.2 pounds. I think, yeah, 2.2 pounds in weight. Um, it can achieve 27 holes. And, and as you quite rightly say, yeah, this, this is a game changer. So yeah. you, can, you can put this in a, in a you know, carry bag, no problem at all, or Joseph's hoodie. And um, yeah, reliability it, it is another a big sell point. The, these yeah. things just don't seem to go wrong. Uh, if there is an Achilles Joseph, here, you, oh, sorry. So I was going to say, if there is an Achilles heel anywhere with uh, battery technology today or lithium battery technology today, generally speaking, it's the charger. Yeah. Joseph, yeah, you I, mentioned absolutely. that uh, you've got a, a 40 foot container of uh, power bugs backing up to your, your uh, warehouse one door. My, one of my best days. It's ever. 16 hours. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to uh, just bring that, um, that up here. Oh, you got a picture of the container, yeah? No, I don't have the container. Sorry, oh. I just got a picture of the power bug, and I thought, you know, why don't you guys uh, just walk us through it a little bit and tell us uh, uh, what's unique about it? Um, well, it's been our our, um, our our challenge really is um, where do we fit? So where where does where how do we compete? Where do we compete, and who do we compete with? And uh, we've, we've got the household brand names out there. Joseph is, um, is leading your marketplace with uh, the Moto Caddy, the Stuart Golf, and the Cart Tech. And in the UK, as I mentioned earlier, we operate in an extremely competitive marketplace and there has to be points of difference. And so we wanted to bring or continue to bring a product to market that was affordable. Um, it doesn't mean to say that it's cheap. It doesn't mean to say that it's, you know, we're, we're cutting back on quality. In fact, by the virtue of our lithium battery uh, that we're using from Germany and the rest of it, this, this is a quality electric golf trolley, but we wanted to make it affordable. So there's the challenge. Um, affordability, quality and service. So that's, that's first of all where this product fits. Okay. Um, I, I, and I think I think it, just to to frame um, to frame things, Rob, uh, yeah. I, be, between Moto Caddy and Power Caddy, what percentage of the UK market would that make up? Um, we can only go by the statistics that are collected, and um, 
it doesn't really give us the whole picture. But I would say between them, possibly 60% of the marketplace, the true yeah. marketplace, I would, yeah. I would imagine. Because that information can only be collected by people that are able to deliver the information to the, if you know, the information collectors. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of stuff that flies under the radar uh, in the UK, eBay, uh, Amazon, um, green grass, direct, smaller direct brand sellers. There's an awful lot which just can't be accounted for. So maybe 60, 70 percent. Yeah, because what's interesting is when you talk about point of difference and yeah. and you've got obviously is, you know, for us as distributors of Motocaddy, over the years, what we've seen um, and, and as I say, the objection that we, we, we all overcome. Um, and when you talk about uh, uh, a quality trolley, but good value, and that was where when I said about getting to the 84%, or even if you say 80% of, of golfers, the, yeah. we, we know, uh, my experience is we know the quality of the, the, the power bug. You add in the, uh, the, the, the quality and the uniqueness of the mini lithium battery, and then the other issue, quite frankly, and this is this is you know pretty simple, is the partnership that you and I have developed um, over the last year and a bit. Certainly, it was last July that you know, Sean and I were sitting there with you and Amanda upstairs, and we were talking about what we wanted to do, yeah. and and you know you said that you wanted to, you know, grow the brand globally and obviously the Canadian market, and one of the ways we did that is is quite frankly, you're not making a lot of money with me buying power bugs. And, and I'm also taking that and I'm passing that along to the consumer. So we're going to have, we're going to have a, a GT tour uh, hitting the market at 799 with, with a mini lithium battery and a yeah. GT tour DHC hitting the market at 999. That that's a game changer. That is, that is, uh, you know, so there's no question people can buy another trolley for that price. They're not getting a global brand that's got the quality and the engineering behind it um, beautiful, with, with, with that mini lithium. Look at that. It's one of the best there, things I've seen. There's, you? There's, your, there's your truck pulling up to the warehouse, Rob. <laughs> that truck's got a perfect rear end. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so it's, it's, it's interesting that you know you talk about the differences in the market we figure the the <coughs> sorry the um the rna pace of play study that was done about three and a half years ago said that in our market we were about eight percent penetration the us is down around three mm -hmm. um over europe's over 50 the uk is probably 60 plus ireland 70 odd our goal is to try and get to 15 percent and you know, there's, you know, we have other competitors in, in the Canadian market. We've, you know, if you, if you look at true brands, if you look at true gro global brands, there's probably four of us. Mm -hmm. And I happen to have now three of the, well, let's say there's five. If, because if I count Moto Caddy, Powerbug and Stuart Golf, there's just, so there's five global brands and I happen to have three of them. The biggest thing in the Canadian market is the, the uh, and I, I've said this on media interviews and it hasn't gone over well, but I've said, you know, golf pros looked at, at, uh, at motorized trolleys like they were redheaded stepchildren. They pretended they liked them, but they really didn't. But that went back to the, the failure of lead acid batteries. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, so, so now that you've got the reliability I, the irony for me is after 13 years, you know, 12 years really full on, is we're still pioneering a category in Canada. We're, we're still talking to people about the category and creating the awareness for the category. So as you know, Peter, we have a national TV campaign. So you're sitting down to watch golf on the weekend and you're seeing ads for JPSM Golf. And, and as you know, our analytics show that if you know we've you know the the one that i remember was was a couple of years ago when tiger was in the hunt at the honda you know we went from having a couple of hundred hits 
on our website to over 2,000 hits in one, one Sunday afternoon. And then that translated into sales. So, so even though it's a very, very mature market in the UK, we're still in our infancy. But what we've done is we're growing, we're raising awareness, but we're also bringing to market products to help people get into the category at a reasonable or a, especially with the introduction of Powerbug, you know, affordability, reliability, and, and we'll only see it grow from there. So, you know, sure, we're living in very uncertain times, but, uh, but, you know, this, this, this plan of that truck backing up to that door is <laughs> effectively 15 months in the making. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the thing is, Joseph, we, we, um, when we launched uh, Powerbug in 2003, um, we hit the road in the UK. So we had regional, um, retail golf shows, the London golf show, the Scottish golf show, um, the, the opens, the Scottish open, the Welsh open, um, and we'd have the NEC Birmingham uh, golf show retail shows and they have in their day they were very vibrant we used to have tens of thousands of people turning up all the time and um, I personally stood on these exhibition stands right at the very front talking to people about golf trolleys you know for, for years of my life talking to people <laughs> about what they expected from a golf trolley and um, the message really that was delivered to me in the majority of cases, now, if we talk the golf trolley marketplace as a, as a whole, it's, it's a massive, it's a massive amount of product that's going to be sold there. And each part of uh, that whole will have a different requirement in different volumes. For instance, your Stuart golf trolley there, you know, there are people out there that are looking for exactly what that Stuart golf trolley delivers as far as its design, reliability, uh, and it comes at a price. Uh, similarly, you know, there's the, the power caddy guys and the motor caddy guys and the top cart tech type people out there. Um, you know, there's a place for everybody. But what we noticed was in the vast majority of cases, what the customers wanted was a reliable golf trolley that would uh, carry their clubs over a ploughed field time after time without going wrong. They didn't necessarily need the fuss of all the features of clocks and dials and etc. cetera. Um, they just wanted a, a reliable golf trolley that's affordable. That was it. And so that kind of shaped our brand. That shaped our destiny, really. Uh, that's where we fit. And I think, you know, you're talking about your golf, uh, sorry, uh, trunk slammers. Um, there, there are an awful lot of people in Canada, I'm sure, that are going to look at that offer on your website and, realize hey this this is a, a quality product at a really good price and, and i think we, uh, the other part of it is when you talk about reliability the other thing that comes into my mind is consistency and, and consistency and we know now after all these years is, is we've got clubs that we deal with um, and they will only sell products that we offer because we know that we've got a committed staff that's there 12 months a year. Um, I make a j bit of a joke that we're not a man and his dog. Um, we have this kind of funny thing where we have people come to our facility and they walk in and they go, they look around their heads on a swivel and they go, Oh, I didn't expect this. Yeah. And we go, we go, what do you mean? Well, like I didn't expect a real business. Hmm. Everybody thinks we're going to be selling out of the back of a truck or a garden shed yeah. Or, or whereas when they come in and I mean, Rob, you've seen pictures and but Peter's been to our place many times is mm. our showrooms, like a new car showroom. And that was the idea I had when I built it. Mm. Um, but people walk in and that, you know, we, so we used to start at nine ninety nine and go up to over 4,000 with a signature series Stewart. Now people are going to walk in and start at seven ninety nine and go up to, you know, over $4,000. So, so the reliability of product and the consistency of us being in the business. So, so like I said, when I got in the business all those years ago and got to know Frank at, at Electronic Caddy, and I always, you know, respectfully say Frank was the, the, the godfather of the trolley business in Canada. And, and to look all those years later and look at where we are and they don't exist, it shows you how things can change. 
Yeah, absolutely. And actually, you make that comparison um, with, you know, your place in a car showroom and uh, me, as I said, cutting my teeth in the automotive industry. If you think about it, um, the way golf trolleys are now, there's a lot of similarities in build quality, service that people expect, um, the type of, yeah, the type of component that we're using nowadays is, um, you know, it's along those lines, Joseph. And we look at the automotive industry, um, you know, the, the screens that we're using, uh, the LCD screens, the kind of technology and the, if you like, the cultures um, that are brought into the electric golf trolley world. There's a, a lot of similarities between that and the automotive manufacturers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, and, and Peter, you've seen it. I mean, all those years ago when I, w with Fairways Magazine, when, when I was disproportionately spending money to, to build the awareness, um, you've seen the change. You, you've seen when you go and you play in your golf leagues and you see the number of people that are, are using motorized trolleys. And, and I remember uh, I said to Frank one day, cause I would call Frank cause I was having battery trouble and he was the one that was explaining to me. And, and I, one day I said to him, you know, can I ask you a question? Cause he came up to me at my first show. My first show was the Toronto golf show back in the corner by a pizza stand and behind a pillar. And Frank came up to me and I was a bit skeptical of him coming up and he, and he was, um, he was, he was a, a, a Geordie as David Wells used to say, yeah. uh, Rob. And, yeah. and so was he, a I would, he was a Geordie. Yeah. And, and, and I would say, so one day I said to Frank, like, why, why would you help me? And he said, because the worst thing I can have is a bad competitor because a bad competitor hurts the, the category. And this is a tough enough business. He says, and I think you'll be a good competitor. You look at it all those years later that, you know, we are where we are. And every year I get, we get new brands coming in and people go, Oh, but that trolley is this price. And I go, well, let's see if they're around in 18 months or two years. <laughs> and a lot of them have gone the way of the dodo bird. So um, it's interesting to see, to be here today launching effectively. If you look at it, this is our, our, you know, you know, last week we, we launched our new website with Powerbug on it, but you know, we'll be sending out press releases in the middle of a pandemic. <laughs> um, and we don't know how it'll all play out, but it's, it's interesting. It's an interesting situation to be in. Okay. Well, on, on that note, uh, I think Sorry. unless you've got a, some final remarks there, Rob, I was going to say, I'm, I'm going to wind this up and, um, thank you for, uh, for being with us today. Yes, um, if, pleasure. if you're, if you're interested in getting more information on Powerbug in Canada, you can go to jpsmgolf.com and, uh, Rob, thanks for being with us. Joseph, thank you for participating today and uh, join us next week on another episode of the fairway show. Thank you very much. Okay. And I'll see you guys later. Oh, we stopped recording. All right. Okay. Good.